Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing something a little different. This isn't going to be my works today, I'm going to be reading a collection of short stories from other authors. These are all written by authors on the horror writer Amino. As this is a multiple story video, the reviews for them will be at the end of the story rather than after each one. Something is wrong by Addicted to Pain. Something's terribly wrong. I can't tell what it is just yet, but I know something's wrong. It's gotten worse. He's gone. The one who watches is gone. He just left. It isn't like him to just leave us. Who will get us food? My people will surely die off if they don't come back soon. It's been a week, and we don't have much food or water left. Please help us. I just heard a sound. I hear the sweetest voice say, Hey guys, I'm back from vacation. Hope you didn't get in too much trouble while I was gone. He opens our cage and fills our bowl while he lets me and one of my companions sit in his pocket. I love our owner. I hope he never leaves again. And now we have a selection of flash fix written by Evan the Nerd 83. Handprints. There's this urban legend spreading across town. You might recognize it. Some towns have recycled each other's own myths, but each one has its own spin. Ours is no different. A bus full of school children gets stuck on some train tracks, the engine breaks down, or a tire gets blown, or maybe the driver wants to commit suicide and decides that it would be best if he dragged innocent kids with him. It doesn't matter. All that matters is the ending. The bus is struck by an oncoming train, everyone dies, and the ghosts of those children now haunt those very same train tracks. They push any car that stops on them, either intentionally or accidentally, until it's off. Common urban legend, right? Well, there's a catch. They leave handprints on the windshield and on the bumper, visible handprints that are small and pale. This might scare the living, or provide some sliver of hope for the afterlife, but it is always the hands of those children. Nobody questions why they never see an adult's handprint on the hood of their car. Well, they don't have a chance to. Not here. Not in the town where there weren't any children on the bus. Where the bus was transporting mentally ill patients from the old asylum to another. Where the driver killed himself by accident, but the riders on purpose. They don't have a chance to scream before cold, unseen hands wrap around their throats and begin to squeeze. Late Night Sip You're getting a sip of water late at night, the living room is dark, the blinds have been shut, and the only light comes from the kitchen. You decide to leave them on. You put the cup back into the fridge and begin to walk through the kitchen, but you stop. Your cat is staring at you from the couch, her green eyes shining in the darkness. She's silent and still, just glaring at you as her tail swings behind her. You're startled for a moment, but realise that it's just your pet. You laugh and reach out to pet her. A sudden hiss pushes your hand back. She isn't silent anymore. She's not lying down anymore. Her back is arched and you back away in confusion. You don't understand why she would be like this. Until you step into the dining room, where the light from the kitchen is the brightest, and you realise that she isn't staring at you, but past you. Now you can see the shadow stretching along the floor. Abandoned You might wake up one morning to find yourself alone. Of course, this might be normal depending on your living situation, but something will seem off. It will be too quiet and peaceful, and you'll notice a distinct lack of birds singing or lawnmowers growling. If you go outside, you'll realise that there's no one else around. It won't matter if you leave your home and eventually town. You will only find empty streets and desolate buildings. You're the only person in an abandoned world. You've just become one of 300,000 people who are reported missing in the United States alone. That was a collection of short stories written for once not by me. So, let's get down to the reviews, shall we? Something is wrong. Some won't be able to see the horror in this one, but a small animal owner will probably understand... I mean, the, what, the, the first thing that actually drew me to this is that the background for the story, the picture background for the story, was a rat, and I've kept rats for most of my life. They rely on us totally as providers, so if we vanish, then naturally it's going to worry them. The relief upon the return for this one does sell it a lot for me. The sentence structure and paragraphing of this one seem a little bit strange at first, almost like a wall of text, but uh, it actually has a short and punchy feel upon the second look. Um, it gets across the mindset of small animals, and it's what humans would be like in the same situation of a benevolent caregiver providing all need, 
uh, providing for all needs, just suddenly leaving. On a literary level, it would work better with paragraph breaks in certain places at, um, at It's Gotten Worse, It's Been a Week, and I Just Heard a Sound. But the piece as is works better without that to get across a sense of rolling anxiety, a continuous fear that won't go away. It works as much, if not more, as a poetic piece as it does as a literary one because of that. As such, the ten swaps in this one aren't as harmful as it would be with other stories. It go, it does go from the present tense, something's wrong, to past tense, it's been a week, and back to present, I hear the sweetest voice. The swaps would be detrimental without the I just heard a sound transition from past into present. Normally, a story should stick in the past until I hear the sweetest voice, but it works much better in its current format. And that's one of very few examples where tent swaps don't kill a story. A few of the full stops in this should be commas or possibly semicolons, but they're not technically incorrect, and it does help keep up the punchy rhythm of it. There are a couple of slight changes to it that would help, incre help improve it a little bit. One would be where is is slipped in instead of us in who will get us food. And another is, my people will surely die off if they don't come back soon, would be better as if he doesn't come back soon, referring to the, uh, referring to the, to the owner. Uh, as it is, it implies that it's the people who'd need to come back soon to avoid tragedy. So just switching it to if he doesn't come back soon would just help that bit flow smoother. Handprints is a somewhat new take on the handprints urban legend outlined in the story itself. For some this will make it seem somewhat derivative, but, other, but others will be glad for a new take on an old story. There are quite a few situations in this where the full stops should be commas or semicolons, and in this case it is actually slightly detrimental to the story as it slows the flow somewhat and takes the reader out. A few examples are a bus full of school children gets stuck on some train tracks, the engine breaks down, or a tire gets blown, or maybe even the driver wants to commit suicide and decides da da da. It should be a bus full of school children gets stuck on some train tracks, semicolon, the engine breaks down, comma, a tire gets blown, or maybe the driver wants to commit suicide, blah 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 blah. This makes it a proper list, joins closely linked statements, and helps keep the flow going more smoothly. Common urban legend, right, should be common urban legend, comma, right. Well, there's a catch. They leave handprints on the windshield and on the bumper. Visible handprints that are small and pale should be, well, there's a catch, semicolon. They leave handprints on the windshield and bumper, comma, visible handprints that are small and pale. This also removes the superfluous use of on there to again help smooth the flow out. This sentence also distracts as handprints themselves can't be pale. Prints are prints. Prints can be light or heavy depending on the pressure, but they can't be flush or pale. That would be the hands that made them. In the sentence, they push any car that stops on them, either intentional or accidentally, until it's off, is another example where commas are needed, as uh, they should be used to isolate any statement from a sentence. This case uses hyphens where they shouldn't really be. Where the driver killed himself by accident but the rider's on purpose is a slightly confusing sentence. It could imply that the driver's death was an accident but the patients all killed themselves on purpose, but the line leaves this ambiguous, implying more that the driver was responsible for all the deaths, intentionally killing the patients but accidentally dying with them, which wouldn't be easy to do by parking a bus on a train track, which would most likely just guarantee death for all, if any. I do like the snappy ending. Short and sharp. Sudden ghost attack is also a nice touch as most stories show the ghost growing slowly in influence and gradually building up to attacking. This one goes straight from nothing happening to death by spiritual strangulation, which for me really helps to sell it as a different touch. Late Night Sip unfortunately came across as quite derivative for me. There are more than a few stories that feature a pet owner thinking their animal staring straight at them only to find it staring past them. But as an expansion to a shorter version, this isn't bad. These stories usually revolve around the pet staring at the owner for a prolonged period of time until eventually the owner realises that it's staring at something supernatural behind them. This one takes it a step further into the realms of home invasion or even sudden monster slash spirit attacks, so I feel it's a different enough take to be readily forgiven for any similarities to other stories. I'm afraid to me this is an example of where second person perspective really doesn't work. 
Uh, second person is very difficult to work anyway, but this is too specific a situation, so there are too many factors that can take the reader out of the story rather than pulling them in. My situation, for example, I don't have a cat, I always have a bottle of water next to me so I don't need to get up to get a drink, the living room doesn't connect to the kitchen, and we don't have a dining room. I live in a small flat, so the living room is the dining room. All of this conspires to distance me from the story because I can just look around and say, well, not my situation, doesn't affect me. It would have worked better in third person. Some people feel that third person doesn't work to draw in a reader, but it's much easier to sympathise with a third person character as we experience this story with them than trying to feel like we are the person in the story when there's just so much in it that isn't us. Abandoned, I really liked. I mean, I personally love vanishing or shifting into other world stories like this one, uh, vanishing on 7th Street, even Wizard of Oz to a degree, though Return to Oz did handle it in a much darker, far more wonderfully disturbing manner, the sort of story handled from the point of view of the vanished. The paragraphing in this one was pretty good, uh, except for where the sentence starts, if you go outside, is essentially studying a new topic and should have its own paragraph. There is a lack of detail somewhat in this one, but here it actually works in its favour, as with a second story that works, it allows the reader to imprint their own feelings onto it. Some might be happy initially that they're finally alone, only to drift into madness. Some might crack straight away from the sudden anxiety of realising there's nobody else there, etc, etc, etc. This is an example of where second person perspective works quite well, as future speculation with few specific personal details, but one that does detract a bit. Anyone not living in the US, like myself, may feel a little distance from that line. Even then it does say, in the United States alone, which doesn't hold it exclusive, so it could still be about literally anyone, which means anyone could still sympathise with it. I do feel it would be improved by changing the figure to show worldwide figures, rather than just single location specific. One specific issue applying to the last three stories by the same author is the use of a full stop followed by but. It isn't true that this should never happen. Many bestsellers often start a sentence with a conjunction like this, but for the most part, but should only come after a comma, unless it's in dialogue, for example. Um, in these stories, every instance I noticed, the but could have come after a comma rather than a full stop. This is just me being a pedant, however. It didn't really detract from the stories in any serious way. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Feel free to leave a comment with your opinion on the stories or the video itself. I've left a link in the description to each of the stories or collections of stories that I read today, so feel free to go and check them out there if you want. And if you'd like to see more of this stuff, hit that subscribe bar so you can catch it as it goes up. Until next time, everybody be beautiful to each other.